What is technically defined as a slum uh, that I really feel is a place of opportunities. Nigerian architect Kunle Adeyemi wanted to find out how the people of Makoko, a slum in Lagos, were building proper houses with next to nothing. To me, that uh, the people who lived in Makoko may be people who were building the cheapest dwellings. And I decided I, this was a great place to learn how they built, how they achieved so much with so little. One of the first things I learned was uh, the very basic ways of building with local materials. And I was asked by one of the community members if I could help with a school that was uh, flooding. So Kunle Adeyemi decided to build a school in Makoko by using the same methods, materials and workers as the community used. However, his approach was innovative. He wanted to make the school float instead of building it on traditional stilts. So the, the project is essentially a, an improvement to the existing uh, building typologies that you see here. So in most of the cases here, the buildings are on stilts, which means the rising sea levels, they are subject to flooding, uh, but we've found a way to allow the structure to float and adapt to the changing tidal conditions. It's the first floating structure in the community. Because, because when they started building this building, people in the community don't believe that things like this will exist to come up. In Makoko, a three-storey building is a first, and it's a floating one, no less. It's a prototype uh, structure, which in this instance is a school, but it's, it's essentially a structure that um, could be used for other things. It could be converted into a home. When they finished it up, everybody was happy that, oh, this is a floating st structure. And they probably, they can't build structure like this in your community and you will be proud of it. Climate change will certainly influence the way we think about our environment and hopefully the architecture uh, should also respond to such uh, influence.